Okay, guys. Now... Let's try <clears throat> 13 things you need to know before going to Jeremy. Cause I. things you need to know before you go from a German native. See, they call us a native, we are not native. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, off and on since 2016. Now, traveling isn't really a thing right now, but I know that many of you can't wait until that's gonna be possible again. And I know that many of you are planning your your trips in your heads and for all of you who've always to to Germany, Germany or even <laughs> moved to Germany I'm sharing some things that you should definitely know before you go these are things that I usually tell friends who go to Germany for the first time but I'm sure that many of you guys could benefit from this as well the first one sounds pretty obvious but believe me people forget about this all the time Different countries have different outlets and voltages. So if you're from the US, you'll need to bring or buy an adapter if you want to use your electrical devices because your American plugs won't fit into a German outlet. We also have a voltage of 220, 230 volt in Germany, whereas it's only 120 in the US. And not oh, wow. all electronic devices can handle the switch. So be sure that you do some research about that before you go. Especially hair dryers and hair straighteners usually don't work with a different voltage. I actually broke a hair straightener once because I tried using my German one in the US and that just made it stop working. What does work usually though is laptops and phone chargers and those kind of things. And even though I am obviously aware that the outlets are different, I totally forgot about it this past Christmas when I went home to be with my family because I got a new laptop recently in the US that came with an American charger and I totally forgot that for the first time ever I would need an adapter that goes from American plug to German plug and not the other way around. But luckily my dad has a bunch of travel adapters. Yes, and one of them as German fits. we have and a of different, course, we also use uh, different currency in Germany. It's the Euro, hugs. just like in many other countries in the European Union. And at least compared to the US, we also use a different measurement system, the metric system with kilometers instead of miles, etc. Even though the US really is the odd one out here. The next point causes a pretty big shock for many people who visit Germany for the first time. Stores are closed on Sundays, even grocery stores. So make sure to plan ahead because the only places you'll be able to find any groceries on a Sunday are stores at train stations and gas stations. This has a Christian background, but it also has to do with workers' rights. In Germany, we believe that everyone should be able to get a rest day on Sunday and spend time with their family. Restaurants, movie theaters, and those kind of things are usually open though. Even if you're only in Germany for a day, you should make sure to carry cash on you. Germany has a pretty big cash culture and there might be quite a few occasions where you won't be able to pay electronically, like when you want to get something at a bakery, a kiosk, small stores that don't accept card payments, or things like parking machines. You can either get some cash from the ATM in Germany, but be aware that there will probably be an ATM fee and a currency conversion fee if your bank account isn't in euros, or you can also ask your bank at home to get some euros to you before you leave. That might be the best option actually, because that way you'll also have some yeah, cash see, right when you Germany arrive. Is what you should do though money is and us, money at the we airport have and American a lot money. Well, we phone. Damn, how do you cut something out in Photoshop? Can you help me? Just have an expert explain it to you on Skillshare. Hey, do you have any marketing knowledge? Eh, I think it would probably be a lot more helpful if you took a marketing class on Skillshare. Can you at least help me organize my closet? Okay, all jokes aside, before I tell you what you need to know about driving in Germany, I'd like to introduce today's sponsor, which is, you guessed it, Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of video classes where you can 
either discover new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity. In addition to the things I just mentioned in that little conversation with myself, you can also learn about music production, entrepreneurship, painting, dancing, languages, and much more. Back in October, when I launched my podcast, Understanding Train Station, I took the class Podcasting Secrets, How to Start Your Own Podcast by Nikayla Matthews Okomi, which gave me a lot of helpful tips, especially about the things that were completely new to me, like the hosting and publishing process of the podcast. The cool thing is that Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so the classes come with learning materials and have a consecutive curriculum with different chapters, and there are no ad breaks. If you would like to join Skillshare as well, make sure to check out the link in the info box below because the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. And even without that offer, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Now let's talk about what you need to know about driving in Germany because there are a few differences that you should be aware of before you get behind the wheel. The first thing is that gas is a lot more expensive in Germany than it is in the US. It's about three times as expensive. So if you were gonna rent a car and just drive around Germany or Europe, that's not gonna be as cheap as you probably expected. In fact, it might be a lot cheaper to get around by bus or train. We have a pretty good train system all over Germany and over Europe too. And especially if you're just staying within one city in Germany, public transportation might be a more convenient and less stressful option for you too, because traffic can be a little crazy, the drivers can be aggressive, and parking in a German city is usually a nightmare. When you need to get gas, you should know that you pump first in Germany and then pay afterwards. And you don't usually pay at the pump, but you'll have to go inside afterwards to do so. The regular gas in Germany is called Super, but of course you can always look at what it says inside of the gas cap as to what kind you should put in the tank. Then of course there are different driving laws in Germany, so be sure to check so, those out before you get on the street. If I get gas, it's called Super, huh? You can't turn right on red, and you always need to watch out for cyclists and pedestrians especially when turning right. I found that that's not really something that people learn in driver's ed in the States, because in many American towns, people walking or riding their bike isn't really a thing. For everything else, like the street signs, speed limits, and driving on the highway, the Autobahn, you can check out my video Autobahn. on driving if you want to learn more. So we say, oh, that's how this you say drive it, on the bond. Americans. In Germany, it's legal to drink alcohol in public, and Germans do that a lot too, especially in the summer. So don't be surprised by that. And who knows, maybe you're going to try it too and get a cool experience out of it. If you can just sit by the river on a warm summer night with a nice. corner store. And yes, we in the US, Germany, guys. I'm sorry. So very, very um, in the US, when you drink in the public, it's legal. Yeah. Now, if you visit Germany as a tourist, you're probably going to spend a lot of time at restaurants. So here's a few things that you should know about that. So when you walk into a restaurant, you can usually just seat yourself and don't have to wait for someone to show you to a table. Yes, you can then have bonfire and have some drinks and stuff, but you, you have to pick it up then, and stuff when you're done because it's a lot. The sizes of drinks are also pretty small where I come from. The States, just like almost everything in Germany. And water is not free at German restaurants, so if you order water, Water, you'll usually get bottled water, either still or sparkling, which Germans are huge fans of. Once you're done, you have to ask the waiter for the check. They won't bring it to you automatically, and you're probably gonna have to flag them down because they're not gonna check on you all the time. And then they'll usually have huh. a place right at the table. I didn't know that. You cash, or you can also pay with your card in most restaurants, but you'll have to let them know because they'll have to get the little device first. Now, when it comes to tipping, we tip around 10% in Germany, and the way it works is that you just tell the waiter directly what you wanna round it up to. So if your check is 20 euros and you wanna tip them two euros, you just tell them to make it 22 and, and you get yes. the for that. It works the same <laughs> way with card payments tip too, and so just make leave. sure to tell them the tip before and, and you pay answer too. card. Also, just a heads up, the waiters in Germany might seem kind of cold compared to the ones in the US. You'll have to flag them down if you need something, and they're probably not going to be as friendly, which has to do with the fact that they don't have to rely on tips as much, but also with the German customer service in general. Please don't let it scare you off, but the customer service in Germany is pretty bad compared to the US, at least in my opinion. 
I know that many Germans are going to disagree with me in the comments, but if you're used to American standards, it's very likely that some of the people working in German customer service will make you feel like you're bothering them or annoying them. If that happens, please don't think that it has anything to do with you being a tourist or not speaking German. It's nothing personal. They treat me like that too. Of course, there's also many great people working in customer service who are lovely to talk See, to. See, we are not nice people. But unfortunately, that's not the standard. Us <laughs> Germans, we are not nice. One of the most popular topics of complaint among tourists is that you have to pay to use the bathroom in Germany. Now it's possible that that's going to be、really? the case. Like at rest stops on the highway, you'll find these bathrooms with turnstiles, and at some public bathrooms there will be a person sitting with a tipping plate. But that's not always the case. And at restaurants, it's usually free. But yes, sometimes you'll have to pay for using a public bathroom, so it's always best to carry some change on you just in case. <laughs> that sucks. Germans like rules, and they like and to follow the rules. And last once we do go back whenever. At a red pedestrian light. So no jaywalking in Germany, and by that I mean that you won't see a lot of Germans jaywalk, and many of them don't like it when others do it either. Which, by the way, applies to other rules too. You may even get reminded by strangers to follow the rules. Besides the whole no jaywalking thing, some of these rules are to stay right on escalators to let people pass on the left, and. Very, very important. Don't walk or stand in bike lanes. Next to the sidewalk, there's usually a bike lane, and there are many, many cyclists in German cities. And if you block the bike lane, you may either cause an accident, or you'll probably have a person on their bike ring their bell at you, or even yell at you. Huh? In case you happen to turn on the TV, I was we just to move out of the way. <laughs> Favorite American actor suddenly speaks German because almost everything is dubbed in Germany. We do consume a lot of American movies and shows in Germany, but Germans aren't big fans of subtitles. And even though more and more people do consume English media in their original version nowadays, the norm in Germany is the dubbed versions. Some movie theaters do show movies in the original versions too, though. You'll just have to look out for the little edition behind the title that says OV. Many of you have probably heard the cliche that Germans are pretty reserved and rather cold, and there's actually a lot of truth to that. So before you go to Germany, you should definitely know that Germans don't usually talk to strangers a lot, and we aren't big on small talk. So don't expect to have some nice conversations with people at the store or something. It depends on who you interact with, of course. But at first sight, Germans can come off as unfriendly, especially when compared to Americans. It's nothing personal, though. It's just a cultural difference. But if you ever have a concrete question, don't hesitate to approach a German and ask them, because Germans are usually very glad to help. Now, how should I ask someone for advice if I don't speak German? Well, most Germans do know some English. They may have a thick accent and may not be able to have a full conversation, but they'll definitely be able to, you know, give you directions or tell you the price of something. Many Germans also speak pretty good English, so those of you who come to Germany and do speak some German and want to use it, don't be thrown off if you speak to someone in German and they reply in English. It's a thing that many Germans do, and I know that it can come off as rude in a way, but they usually just want to make life easier for the two of you because they know that German is a difficult language, and if they think that their English is better than your German, they may think that they can make the conversation more efficient by switching to English. So please don't be offended by that. If you really, really want to practice your German, I'm sure you can just ask them to stick with German. The last point on my list is mainly targeted at people who want to move to Germany. Now, when you move into a new place, be prepared that it might come entirely empty. And by that, I mean that there won't even be blinds, curtains, or light bulbs in it, and oftentimes not even a kitchen. So the space where the kitchen is supposed to be will just have a bunch of cables and pipes stick out of the wall, and you'll be responsible for getting all the appliances and cabinets. Also, leases are、really? unlimited in Germany, <laughs> unless it's like a sublease or something. But in the U.S., I found that a lease usually has an end date, one year in a lot of cases, and then you can either renew it or end it. You won't have to do that in Germany. Also, when looking for a place, you should be aware that a bedroom can be really small in Germany. So you should always look at the size of the room or the apartment, and not just the number of bedrooms, because a three-bedroom apartment in Germany could be smaller than a one-bedroom in the States. Also, bedrooms、hmm. don't have closets in Germany, so you'll need a wardrobe or a dresser to put your clothes in. And there are many, many more differences regarding German and American houses. So 
if you're interested in that, you can just click here and check out my video about differences at home. So those were 13 things that I... Okay, guys. I learned something now. <laughs> Alright, well, I will see you in my last video, so I see you then.